What up, players? It's Wolmas Tip, and this is my welcome to an unboxing of the Bretonian Bowmen for the Bretonian Army for the Warhammer Fantasy game. So I've got this brand new box here that I'm going to be building and painting up, and I just wanted to take you through it because it is packed with goodness. So first of all, you've got all the bases, square base in it. You've also got these two awesome regimental bases, regiment bases, and these are going to be for the stakes that you nail into the ground in front of your unit. But honestly, I love these, and Games Workshop sells these, and they are so great as unit fillers or just to put your single models on for if you have any kind of infantry horde army. Um, 20 millimeter. They also make them in 25 millimeter for you orcs and goblins, warriors of chaos players, and they are great. You have like like eight of these, and you just put your night goblins or men at arms or um, state troopers, or, you know, anything that you know is gonna end up dying in massive droves, and then. When you take them out, you just put them next to each other, and it's so much easier than individually putting, you know, 10 night goblins and trying to rank them up and move them around. Even with movement trays, it's just so much easier like this. And then it's easier if you want to magnetize the bottom, use a magnet strip, and then a, a piece of um, another magnet strip on the bottom uh, into your movement tray, or a piece of metal, a strip of metal into your movement tray. And uh, there's so many videos on it, but I, I have to mention it's it's really great that the Bretonian uh, Bowman kit has this in it. It's too bad, there should be more. Alright, let's organize our sprues here into... Uh, let's see how many like sprues we have together. Uh, yeah, there are so many cool bits on this too. Here you've got a third reg regimental base there. Transfer kit, or transfer sheet, I'm sorry. And four. So you actually get four regimental bases. I thought you only get two, but you get four. And there's that. One more of these, and one more of those. Okay, so let's take you through it. So you've got three of these sprues, which contain four bowmen without heads but two, four, six, eight heads. And the cool thing about these bodies is that they have a very interesting style of armor. They have like padded leather. So that can give you a lot of good, interesting um, ways to work with that. I've seen most of the examples of this padded leather that I've seen are, they paint them in a dark flesh, kind of like dark maroon kind of color. And um, that's probably the most effective. You also have like these, I mean these are all peasants. The idea for the bowmen and for the men-at-arms is that these are peasant levy militias, which means that they are pulled from the farmers and the um, peasants working the lands of the knights and the lords, and that they are generally very, very poor and grubby. So that gives you a lot of interesting um, options and to be creative with them, which I'm definitely going to definitely going to take advantage of when painting mine. Make them as individual and awesome looking as possible. Now let's zoom in and take a look at the heads. You've got, <laughs> look at this guy with all the bandages. Dark man. Oh, remember that movie? You've got this bloke here. Can't tell, is that a, is that a double chin or is that just like a, maybe he's like a, got a bandage under his tooth like he's got a thing wrapped around his head like he's bandaged like a toothache or something. Um, here's this guy with a helmet. Here's an unhelmeted head guy. Real interesting, I think this was right around the time when like Warhammer Fantasy was getting a lot more detailed individually with their models and adding a lot of cool little flourishes. There's this guy with the with the horrible teeth, he got the terrible grill. Here's a guy with a hood and looks like an eye patch. So you've got three of those sprues. And then uh, we'll get off to the command sprue in just a little bit, but let's take a look at the at the uh, the base decora decorations. So for the regimental bases, you would put 
uh, some of these things on it. And you get three of these screws as well. You've got these pikes looking things to stick into the base. And you stick them into the base like this so that they're at an angle, kind of like to, um, in case the bowmen get charged, enemy horses will skewer themselves on these. Very, very cool. You've also got these like bunches of arrows to stick into the ground. A bunch of arrows here. And these look like they go onto the models. Uh, you've got this mallet looking thing. And let's see if we can make sense of what this is. Oh! Awesome. Dead rat. This piece right here is like a dead rat that hangs from the belt. Very funny. You've got a sword. You've got chains to hang between the uh, pikes. Or, I don't know, what do you call them pikes? I'll call them, I'll just call them wooden spikes. Uh, you also get a, for the champion, a longbow and a, looks like a quiver for arrows. Another quiver full of arrows for maybe like the musician or the standard bearer. And um, these are awesome. You glue them together, they glue together over here in the back, and they are hot coals that you stick in the ground in the regimental bases. And presumably the um, archers, the Bretonian bowmen, um, put their arrows in there, light them on fire, and then shoot them at the enemy. So cool, so thematic. I'm gonna have a great time building the regimental bases up. Th that's probably one of the reasons why I decided to choose these guys. Because, I mean, just that just looks so cool. And um, much more interesting to me than, or it gives me much more options than just a, um, a squad of space marines or something, tactical marines. And this, even better. More chains to hang between the, the wooden spikes. Look at this guy, he's like a jester head. He's got a jester head. The musician has a horn here. You've got two kind of men-at-arms-ish looking shields, which are just basically look like really cool planks with uh, iron edging on it, or sh uh, sheets of metal. <sighs> a snail. I didn't even know this came in the kit until now. If I did, I would have bought these a long time ago. How cool is that escargot? Oh, awesome. You got a little chest here, a little locked chest. Two more heads. One screaming, one all brrr looking. And then, look at this! It's a doggy! You get a little doggy. I don't even know what kind of dog that would be. It's like a little wolf pup. So awesome. Um, a lantern here to top, uh, put on the top of your standard. You also get uh, this guy with uh, one of those kind of pot pot like helmet helmets with the with the wide rim all the way around and okay stupidest piece in the kit is this little flag on the top of this guy's head this just ridiculous why would you want that so dumb and then here's an arm with a torch and the torch has a little flame coming out of it and then these are their bodies for the champion much more ornate they've got like studded leather armor and um like there there's more detail to their leggings they're knee pads look like they could be little shields to paint their their lords uh, symbols on Here's the back of the jerkin really nice detail and here is the standard bearer you can tell us the standard bearer because he's got an arm raised up his right arm is raised up as if holding the standard and let's see what other details you got a sword with keys I, that's really cool and imaginative right and you've got a sword, or a hand holding a sword, hand holding a club, and a hand holding another sword. Say, in case you um, don't want to use this guy as a as a standard bearer, but um, you still want him to be in the squad, which why wouldn't you? And then here, I think these two frames are also in the men at arms screws. And if so, then um, that's nice. They kind of put them together. So. Here we have, I think these are weapons. I think, they look like drums. Weapons for a drum. Uh, these two pieces here, you've got a hand with a sword. You've got a guy with uh, feathers in his helmet. Yeah, is this a drum? This looks like it might be the drum. There's that, you've got a fleur-de-lis. <laughs> this 
this guy with a ridiculous French mustache that looks like he stepped out of Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Um, you've got, what is this? this looks like a... No idea what this is. Oh, it's a bird. Pelican. I thought it was like a sleeve or something, but it's like a, it's like a stork or a pelican or something. Here's the, sh the banner. Which I don't particularly care for, but I'm gonna see what I can do, make it look interesting for the for the painting contest. And you've got a hand holding an arrow. Um, what is this? A, a dagger or a knife or something with a little shield pendant dropping off of it. Hand holding an uh, this looks like a like a spear or a halberd. You've got a friar, friar John or little John or like little friar tuck with a the shaven head, um, a keg, oh, a keg with a thing of ale, a stump with an axe, what the, what is going on? And you've got this fat body, <laughs> this fat chubby body there for the, um, the guy with the monk haircut. Uh, a shaven head, which you can also use for your fat guy, an arm with a longbow, a horn here, a little, a little mace, and this is like a, a topper for your, for your, for your banner. So, what a cool kit! This is one of the coolest kits I've seen in a long time because it is packed full of awesome, awesome detail. And I mean, just looking at the command frame, how ridiculously cool is that to have like a snail and a keg and um, a fucking stump with an axe in it? That's ridiculous. So one of my favorite kits that I've ever bought, and um, just so many bits, so many bits. That snail, for example, I'm just so excited. Anyways, I'm going to build these guys up, and I'll show you what I come up with when we get back for the uh, second half of this video. Alright, and we are back, and this is the unit of 16 Bretonian bowmen that I was able to come up with. There's a front shot with the little barricade thing in the front. We'll take you through what I was able to build and then go over what is left in the kit. So, um, first thing is, I'm really happy that you still get two regimental bases left over. So this is really cool. I actually think I should have, now that I think about it, I should have used these in the back. Um, <laughs> oh well, I can save these for for more projects in the future. And you also get an extra four square bases because the bases come in a pack of 20 and you only use 16 of the single ones. Oh, the more I think of it, the more I'm regretting not using two regimental bases for the back row. Oh well, that's okay, the glue's already dried. So the first thing, let's take a look at, are these cool barricades and um, the hard thing about these was I wasn't sure how to glue these chains on because they're joined here at these sections and um, it's I was like, wait, do I glue these to the base first and then glue it on? But then you risk them being not correct and correctly spaced and then I just kind of fumbled my way through all of that while the glue was still drying. Then I decided to put the little doggy here on the front, which is where the, um, I think the fat fryer guy is gonna be. So kind of like he hangs around him for food. In the front I also have evenly spaced some arrows and the little coal, hot coals. This is the side that doesn't have, um, one of the chains is like for a command screw. So it has like shields on it. These are just, plain chains. They're a very plain chain. And you've got the arrows and the coal. So my idea for this regiment is that they are uh, former highwaymen that were uh, would rob from the rich and steal from the poor like Robin Hood, but then they were caught by the Duke of the province and forced to be in, serve in his armies or they would go to the headsman's block. So they all decided, well, why don't we just serve in the army? Like the dirty dozen, but there's 16 of them. And so you've got a couple of officers from the 
uh, from the from the Duke's personal army to train them, of course. And then you've got some other characters. So let's take a look. Here's the dark man guy with his creepy mask. And I try to give each one of them something special. So the way I have them lined up, let's actually zoom out and take a look at them. The way I have them lined up is that they can either grab from the quiver of the guy in front of them, or I also took extra bunches of arrows to stick into the ground so that each guy would have access to arrows. And like say this guy doesn't have a quiver, but he would be able to reach in front of him to the guy with the quiver and use his arrows or you know, something like that. So I kind of evenly spaced it so uh, that everybody would be able to reach arrows and shoot them at the enemy. So there's guy number one. Uh, what I what I realized after I finished filming the first section was that the rat is tied up with a radish here. So that's a, let's take a look at that. It's a radish or a turnip. What's the difference? I don't know the difference. And um, a little rat. So that's really cool. And I'm gonna give each of these guys a story. I think that's really helpful um, and a lot easier to do with humans than goblins or skaven or skeletons. Uh, here's a guy with a eye patch. Weird hand-eye coordination. I also found out, oh, one of the hard things when ranking these guys up is that the guys on the back, you're gonna have to move them to one side so that their bows here, because they stick out in front, they don't hit the guy in front of them. So here we've got a guy with a quiver. Oops. Here's a guy with a mallet and a rat. I also tried to use all of the heads from the command sprues. So we've got this guy here. This is one of the officers. Um, I think I'm going to paint the officers' heads with, or their helmets with the colors of wherever they are. So I'm, I'm probably going to do the standard red and blue and then um, vary it up with their their clothing. But we'll make red and blue the uh, actual colors of the army. This guy's got a locked chest on his back. And I think the, the fluff behind it is that that's where he keeps the skull or something of his of his wife and or maybe baby child or something grim and dark like that because they were attacked by beastmen or something, which tend to happen a lot in Bretonia. So uh, that's why he joined this merry band of, of pillagers because he had no way to support himself and uh, but he keeps his wife's he keeps his wife's head always with him something like that I don't know uh, it's groom and gruesome though so I kind of like it and finally we've got this guy here another officer of the, the army sent to watch over the men now the front row is where we've got the characters like all the cool characters so this guy's got he was the one with the flag on his head uh, we chopped it off though, so he's one of the officers of the um, sent to watch over and train the militia. We also have this guy here with the bald head or the shaved head. I think he's pretty cool. Then we've got the, I guess their sergeant or their, like the captain of their little unit here. So he's got a sword, he's got a bow, and um, yeah, we'll paint him up in the livery of the king. We also have this guy, the standard bear with the ridiculous French mustache. I, I fart in your general direction. He's got a, a bow strapped to his back with a quiver, a sword on his arm, and he also has the standard. And the standard has the little chapel top as well as the lantern that I glued on at an angle to make it look like it's swinging while he's waving a standard forward. So that's that. Next guy, I thought this was so cool and I didn't notice this when I was unboxing the model earlier. These feathers are actually still attached to like a pigeon on his helmet. <laughs> so he's strapped a pigeon to his helmet so he can always have feathers for his uh, quiver or for the, um, the quills or you know, whatever those things are, the, the end of the arrows. He's also, another cool fact, oh lizardmen slam priest, don't look at this video, he's hitting his drum with flippin' frogs. How crazy is that? I think that's pretty cool. 
Then we've got our fat fryer guy here, who is holding like a staff with a little pelican thing. No idea why. I don't know. And an arrow, just so you can show that he's... <laughs> maybe that's what he does. He hands arrows to the other guys in the front row. He's got a bow that he never uses on his back. He's also got a horn, which he uses to call people when his little keg here is full. And, and then he, um, he passes out drinks to the men. So, or he, uh, he'll, he'll pass around his lucky mug and people can drink from it. And so that's his kind of, he's, I decided he's going to be the, uh, what's the word? Um, the morale officer. They invented it for him because he, he can't shoot, but he, he doesn't know, uh, he doesn't want to go to the headsman's block. So he decided to follow his brothers into battle and keep the morale up. Morale officer. And we've got one more guy here with the officer's helmet. And last but not least, we've got this little jester guy. So I thought this jester's helmet was just so too cool not to use. So we put that in. Uh, I gave him a scabbard with the keys on it, just um, just for fun. And I gave him the little snail. Like he's a he's a jester that gave up jesting when his lord's estate manor got <laughs> burned to the ground. And he and his pet snail are now uh, joined up with this unit of ne'er do wells. So let's push him back to the front, and uh, let me talk about. Oh, before we do that, let me talk about the extra bits and pieces that you get with the kit. So here are the frames that I didn't use, and let me show you what we ended up with: more coals and spikes for scenery, chains for that, and these arrows. I couldn't find a use for them. Didn't know where to put them. Uh, except for like on the ground and I didn't want to put anything lying down on the ground along with the sword so uh, I could have strapped the sword to get some guy's belt but it just didn't, didn't look good without the scabbard um, more spikes arrows and another sword I tried to use as much stuff as I could if you haven't noticed arrows and a sword, more spikes Eight heads. A fleur de lis, banner top, along with the stump and the axe. I couldn't find a place to put it, so I decided not to use it. We've also got this little dagger thing or something over here with the I'm not really sure what this is. It looks yeah, it looks like a, a knife in a sheath with the little the little um, shield motif on it. So I can I could probably put that on a guy. A hand with a club. And from the command screw here, we've got two shields with arms. I wasn't sure if it feels legal to put this on the sergeant, so I decided not to put it on the sergeant. And I decided that the musician would be the drummer because he has those cool frogs, so I didn't use his horn. We've got a hand with a club, a hand with a sword, a hand with a torch. That might have been cool for lighting the coals, but I, in the end I decided not to. And eight more heads. So for the amount of extra bits you get, if you have like Empire troops or anything else where you can use these kind of Bretonian-esque kind of heads with the helmets and everything, then you have a lot of good bits to choose from after you're done. There we go. Oh, other side. Le Fou is on the wrong side. For as for the so let's say the bits I give two thumbs up, hundred percent A plus. For the ease of putting together and cleaning them, for a new modeler I can see how, or a new painter I can see how it would be frustrating because of the issue of ranking all these guys up. If you don't know how to rank guys up properly, it's a little bit hard, but it's a lot easier than a model. I mean, the fact that the models all come in one piece except for the heads, I think it makes it a lot easier than if you had to glue the guys together, like, say, uh, the Empire Militia, which is an old set or say um, orcs and goblins with spears, orcs, orc boys with spears. Because not only do you have to glue them to the base and angle them to the bodies of the bases behind them, you also have to think about where the limbs are. If you're twisting the body from, if you have the legs facing a certain way and are twisting the top, that means that changes the angle of where their weapons are. A lot of people don't think about that, but that's really important to keep in mind. So for the ease of ranking them up, I'm going to give them a B for put, uh, putting them together, cleaning and placing them. 
Um, just because of how you have to really think about where each guy is going to be placed in the unit and um, you know where their weapons are. But overall, as a unit, how it looks, I mean, the, the creativity, the freedom to build what you want, make it look the way you want, I love it. I think this is one of the most fun, entertaining kits I've gone through in a long, long time. It was a lot of fun, so for me, I give it an A plus as a box kit. A plus. There are minor things that kind of take away from it, if, especially if you are a new hobbyist, th that grade will drop. But for me, I mean, the fact that you have scenery included in it, you have little animals like the, the snail and the doggy, um, coal and stuff, it's just the, the freedom and the creativity that you can tap into. I wish more, new, more of the newer kits coming out had as much fun with them. Like, I hope they don't redo the Bowman in a long time. I think they, they really hit jackpot with this and can make it last for, for a while. So thanks for watching. This has been an unboxing of the Bretonian Bowman. Hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next video.